Okay, next to it, we have the sales for New Delhi are shown with respect to time and item dimension according to type of item sold. As we want to view the sales data with one or more dimension, say the location dimension, then the 3D view would be useful. The 3D view of the sales data with respect to time, item, and location is shown in the table below. The above 3D table can be represented as 3D data cube as shown in the following figure. So, figure 11, they show 3D data cube. So, if you notice, we have here the time as a quarter, Q1, Q2, Q3. Q4 and we have here the location on the top part so we have the location and of course on this side right side okay it is not been uh, given legend now but uh, on the quarter itself it identifies home entertainment computer phone security as their types item so if we're going to interpret uh, the topic we have in terms of the metadata in the word dimension it categorizes as item home entertainment item computer item phone item security because this is what you call the type of it okay let's continue now next topic we have is the data mart the data marts contain a subset of organization-wide data that is valuable to specific groups of people in an organization. In other words, a data mart contains only those data that is specific to a particular group. For example, the marketing data mart may contain only data related to items customers and sales the data marts are confined to the subject okay so that is what you call the data mart points to remember about data marts window based or unix linux based servers are used to implement data marts they are implemented in low cost servers the implementation cycle of data mart is measured in short period of time example in weeks rather than months of year. Next, the life cycle of data marts may be complex in a long run if their planning and design are not organization wide. Now, on this part, it identifies that the data mart can be considered gathering all of its sub data. Okay? If it is not all of it and it's considered to be a part of it, then we cannot consider it as a data mark because it should be gathered all of it in any uh, area. Now, data marks are small in size. Data marks are customized by department. The source of a data mark is departmentally structured data warehouse. And the last, data marks are flexible so if you if you want to look at for example you look at at the products then all of the uh, seller of that product you have the data for example how much price they are going to sell it how much additional uh, extended currency are going to add on it that is the idea so if you have that idea you can have your own uh, knowledge about ah I'm going to put as much as lower because they have the higher price so something of a business strategy in the organization the result of that is the use of the data marks for example let's make it uh, very uh, compact you check all the uh, motorcycle which have a price ranging okay so that's why if we're going to put up a business like the same as entrepreneur of uh, a motorcycle then you have the idea on how to put sales price on it that's the idea now we have here in figure 12 this figure showed data mark now on the data warehouse you're going to get the sub part of it and make it sure it is all complete because it states that the data mark must be gathered integrated all of the data in the part of it uh, for example 
it should be the price that all of the price as you see in the data warehouse must be put on that uh, by view so that you can have an analysis and a decision on how to do that and this is what you call the top-down approach okay so that is the idea next virtual where the view over an operational data warehouse is known as virtual warehouse the operational database is very different from uh, data warehousing and it mentioned that if it is an operational data warehouse then it is considered to be a virtual warehouse now it's easy to build a virtual warehouse building a virtual warehouse requires excess capacity on operational database server so you need to have a uh, speed in terms of the device because we're identifying here the the capacity of uh, using those servers and it interprets it should be a server and a server is this a hardware okay it is a hardware now you can do virtual warehouse in the server just to view over only the operational data warehouse so here is the figure number 13 this show a uh, figure of virtual data warehouse okay so we have here the browsers, uh, the company like YouTube, Google, Twitter, Facebook, electronic company. We have the database which is the SQL server, Microsoft. We have Excel as flat file that what I've been mentioned in our first topic and we have the corporate databases. Corporate databases are any kind of databases that uses by the company. So if you're going to gather all of this and you want to view then that is what you call the virtual data warehouse so you're going to make your own part of the data warehouse and that is what you call virtual data warehouse why because you are using computer you know uh, a server is part of a computer one type of a computer okay that's the idea now we are finished with the data warehousing terminologies now let's move on to the data warehousing delivery process how do we deliver data warehouse now a data warehouse is never static if it is not static then it is considered to be dynamic it involves as the business expands as the business involve evolves its requirements keep changing and therefore a data warehouse must be designed to write with these changes hence a data warehouse system needs to be flexible so it is dynamic and it is flexible that is how we deliver data warehouse next ideally there should be delivery process to deliver a data warehouse however data warehouse projects normally suffer from various issues that make it difficult to complete tasks and deliverables in the strict and ordered fashion demanded by the waterfall method so the the key here is something like waterfall and if you're going to ask me of uh, what is a waterfall method or model so waterfall model is simply as flowing down waters in a step-by-step -step series of level that is a, what you call waterfall model there is a waterfall model that on the first level you can have your feedback but there's also a waterfall model that you cannot have a feedback until you finish the last part at the bottom of the fall. That is the idea. So it is states here that uh, they are using the what the data warehousing using waterfall method. Now most of the times the requirements are not understood completely. The architectures, the design and build component can be completed only after gathering and studying all the requirements so waterfall model is one part in our methodology in research and uh, this is consists of uh, definition okay uh, feasibility study design uh, logical and physical so up to the implementation and maintenance that is what you call uh, part of the waterfall model delivery method the delivery method is a variant of a joint application development approach 
adapted for the delivery of a data warehouse. We have staged the data warehouse delivery process to minimize risk. The approach that we, we will discuss here does not reduce the overall delivery time scales but ensures that the business benefits are delivered incrementally through the development process. Now, increment uh, is one of the method also in development life cycle. Okay? That's why it is mentioned here incrementally. It means to say data warehouse will only uh, increment or generate or make it update every time. That is what you call incremental. It should be added with the new data. That is the summary of that incremental. Note, the delivery process is broken into phases to reduce the project and delivery risk. So it is true because uh, if you have a broken process in a cycle, <laughs> imagine the delivery method mentioned here are in cycle. So if there are broken parts on the phases or cycle, then that is considered to be a risk. Now, in figure 14, this figure show delivery process. So look at this, data warehouse delivery process, IT strategy, education, technical blueprint, build division, history load, ad hoc query, automation, finished product of the program. Now, on the other side, right, business case analysis, that's why I mentioned uh, there's what they call case, okay, business case. So we have business requirements and the requirements evolution, then extending scope. The requirements evolution goes directly to the build division, history load, ad hoc, automation. So every business has its part in technology. IT strategy. Data warehouse are a strategic investment that require a business process to generate benefits. IT strategy is required to procure and retain funding for the project. Mm, that is true. Okay. Uh, we are procuring uh, devices. Not only devices, but even software and hardware that we needed to use to make the business profitable. Business case. The objective of business case is to estimate business benefit. I mentioned it already. That should be derived from using a data warehouse. This benefit may not be quantified quantifiable but the projected benefit need to be clearly stated when we identified quantifiable that is what you call quantity so uh, we can count on it if the business is achieving its goal or objective even its vision if a data warehouse does not have a clear business case, then the business tends to suffer from credibility problems at some stage during the delivery process. Yes, uh, but it depends upon the situation of the business. There are businesses that uh, uh, they don't need already uh, what you call procurement of uh, those uh, hardware and software. Still, we have right now. but. It is considered to be few. But if we're going to ask uh, about uh, companies, yes, it is needed. It will suffer. Okay. Now, therefore, in data warehouse project, we need to understand the business case investment, education, and prototyping. The organizations experiment with the concept of data analysis and educate themselves on the value of having a data warehouse before settling for a solution. Uh, that is true because if you are not educated, then how can you answer the problem? How can you solve the problem? How can you define the problem? That's the idea. This is addressed by prototyping. Prototyping means this is one part of the methodology. Okay, there are there are words here in data warehousing. They are going to input it inserted on our uh, sentences and paragraphs, which are very broad enough. Prototyping is something like uh, the start or a scratch of a complete program. Okay. A computer program, an application program, a database program, 
an analysis program okay that is what you call the prototyping it helps in understanding the feasibility and benefit of data warehouse another word here is feasibility um, of course feasibility is the study of uh, how you're going to render your business the prototyping activity on a small scale can promote educational process as long as followed prototype addresses a defined technical objective prototype can be thrown away after the feasibility concept has been shown uh, activity addresses a small subset of eventual data content of data warehouse activity time scale is non-critical so we have a problem on uh, bullet number two yes uh, number one uh, three and four are correct but number two so i think because i am teaching this uh, almost uh, 20 years uh, prototype uh, cannot be thrown away right here can cannot be thrown away why because there is a version and update on it okay uh, update of the version because prototype is a scratch of the system okay then uh, we, we don't need to throw this away but we need to improve for a certain series of version that's why in uh, in computer everything we do we don't throw it why because we are using it again to make it more uh, to have a speed of finishing other versions if you're going to throw it away then how can you have your own next version of your system okay it should be like similar to windows 95 then they they, they didn't throw it away but they're improved it with windows 98 okay windows 2000 windows 2007 windows xp windows 8 windows 8.1 and right now we have windows 10 so how did they do it because they didn't throw away the prototype they need to improve it and it's also indicated on the feasibility study under the feasibility study if you have the result that is considered to be go on then everything that must you do is considered to be correct everything that is being used is, is considered to be correct you can throw away the prototype if the result in the feasibility study is to think again that is the idea so i contest this uh, bullet number two because um, i already test this away and uh, i have the actualization of it from the company from the server from the database from the application i know about all of this that's why again we there is a problem with this can and can't okay that is only the problem can and can this word can now the following points are to be kept in mind to produce an early release and delivery business benefits identify the architecture that is capable of evolving focus on business requirements and technical blueprint phases limit the scope of the first build phase to the minimum that delivers business benefit understand the short term and medium term requirements of the data warehouse business requirements to provide quality de deliverables we should make sure that the overall requirements are understood if we understand the business requirements for both short term and medium term then we can design a solution to fulfill short term requirements the short term solution can be grown to a full solution the following aspects are determined in this stage as follows. The business rule to be applied on a data. Next, the logical model for information within the data warehouse. Third, the query profiles for the immediate requirements. And fourth, the source system that provides this technical blueprint. This space needs to deliver an overall architecture satisfying the long-term requirement. This space also delivers the component that must be implemented in a short term to derive any business benefit and again i'm telling you it's better to start in a short term rather than in a long term make it short and make it profitable 
then make it in a medium in a long term that is the idea uh, in every books that I read in terms of the business now next so we have here in figure 15 this figure show part of technical blueprint so on the top of the triangle data blueprint on the middle functional blueprint on the left side we have the application blueprint and on the right side we have technical blueprint it means to say the the data is on the top part and that is could be the last part so if we we use all the necessary uh, tools first okay from technical to application make it function then we can have our data more specific that we can analyze the blueprint needs to identify the following the overall system architecture data retention policy backup and recovery strategy server and data mart architecture capacity plan for hardware infrastructure components of database design so we have six uh, and this talks about the system itself overall system data backup and recovery server okay hardware database there's only one part here of data warehouse data mart architecture they are all system generated computer system generated and data mart is the only one which is considered to be the subgroup or the summary of the data building the version in this stage the first production deliverable is produced this production deliverable is the smallest component of a data where this smallest component adds benefit to the business and that is what you call the version which I mentioned uh, from our previous slide so we cannot throw the prototype because there is a version on it next history load this is the phase where the remainder of the required history is loaded into a data warehouse in this space we do not add new entities but additional physical tables will be preferably be created to store increased data volume uh, in a flat file we can consider one table only but if it is multiple then it is not already a flat file it is considered to be in a relation so it must be considered as a relational database let us take an example suppose the build version phase has delivered a retail sales analysis data warehouse with two months worth of history this information will allow the user to analyze only the recent trends and address the short-term issue the user in this case cannot identify annual and seasonal trends to help him do so last two years sales history could be loaded from the archive now the 40 gb data is extended to 400 gb note the backup and recovery procedure may become complex therefore it is recommended to perform this activity within a separate case um yeah so uh, everything that i do in computer i have a backup of it ad hoc query in this space we configured the ad an ad hoc query tool that is used to operate a data warehouse these tools can generate the database query okay so when we said query it's only a view a browse so that's why don't be uh, too confused okay so query means view browse or browse now note it is recommended not to use this access tool when the database is being substantially modified it's true if, if there is a modification no need to query because imagine you modify then you view so we can counter problem on it automation in this space operational management processes are fully automated again fully automated this would include the following transforming the data into a form suitable for analysis monitoring query profiles and determining appropriate aggregations to maintain system performance extracting and loading data from different sources system generating aggregation from the predefined definition within the data warehouse backing up restoring and archiving the data so that is uh, part of uh, automation transforming monitoring extracting generating backup 
and restoring. Extending scope. In this space, the data warehouse extended to address a new set of business requirements. The scope can be extended in two ways, namely, one, by loading additional data into a data warehouse. Two, by introducing new data marts using the existing information. This is good. Note that this uh, phase should be performed separately since it involves substantial effort and complexity. So ex I think extended scope is one part of uh, ITs. One part of the ITs. Because this is uh, in a programming part. So if you want to add uh, extended uh, additional data into a data warehouse then you're going to input uh, additional tables and another is uh, additional dimension okay so that you can have your data loaded in the other data now you can produce also new data marts it's better to produce or create another data mart so it is easy rather than creating again another fields of the tables it's very hard. Requirements evolution. From the perspective of delivery process, the requirements are always changeable. They are not static. The delivery process must support this and allow these changes to be reflected within the system. This issue is addressed by designing the data warehouse around the use of data within business processes as opposed to the data requirements of existing queries. Everything is changeable. That's why we have the evolution. And we, it is mentioned, it is not a static. If it is dynamic, then it can grow and it can shrink. That is the idea. The architecture is designed to change and grow to match the business need. The process operates as a pseudo application development process where the new requirements are continually fed into the development activities. And the partial deliverables are produced. These partial deliverables are fed back to the users. And then, now, when we said architecture, and it's mentioned here, that it is a pseudo application, then therefore, there is no concrete and specific architecture. Because they mentioned here pseudo. When we said pseudo in technical term, it is something like a false application. A false application in terms of nobody knows what is the perfect architecture for their business. That's why we need to predict what architecture suits more in our business. Then if it is good, then we're going to redesign it. That is the idea. Validation board. So we are finished with the function of data warehouse tools and utilities. Next is the terminologies and the last is delivery process. Congratulations, we successfully finished our lecture number 5. Thank you and good luck.